This is a lesson on work and electric potential energy and a unit on electrostatics. I wanted to take a few slides and help you reason through the relationship between the work done by an electric field and the electric potential energy, as well as the work done by you as opposed to the work done by an electric field. These are confusing topics I've seen for students through the years, and I just wanted to take some time to reason through these things, these quantities, and how they relate to one another. So the first thing I want to look at is just a point charge. This is a positive point charge in here. I've drawn electric field vectors. And you can see they're larger near the point charge than they are farther away from the point charge. I've also drawn two equipotential surfaces, one closer in and one farther away. And you can also see that there are different points in here. And so I might ask you, um, what is the sign of the work done by the electric field um, in moving a point charge, a positive point charge, from point A to point B, the work done by the electric field. Well, if I put a positive charge at point A, it does not want to be close to this positive charge in the middle, and it will spontaneously move to point B. It will, the electric field will force it in this direction, there's the electric force, and the displacement is along this direction. So the sign of the work done by the electric field moving a point charge from point A to point B is going to be a positive value. Okay, uh, I could ask what's the change in electric potential energy? Did this positive charge gain electric potential energy or lose electric potential energy? Well, it's close to the uh, uh, positive charge, and in this situation, when it's at point A, I will say that this electric field has a high potential to do work on that positive charge. That positive charge does definitely does not want to be next to this other positive charge. Uh, the electric field is pushing it in that direction. The electric field has a high potential to do work on this positive charge. So at, at point A, it has a high electric potential energy at point A, and it goes to a lower electric potential energy at point B. So what we know is that the change in electric potential energy from A to B is going to be negative. So we get this relationship. The work done by the electric field will be negative the change in the electric potential energy. If the electric field is doing work, the charge is losing potential energy. Another thing I wanted to consider is what if I move this positive chest charge from point A to point C? From point A to point C. Well, to me, this is equivalent if you move from one point in the room to another. You're not changing gravitational potential energy. You're along an equal surface of gravitational potential energy. Well, that's true here. When I move from point A to point C, this is an equal surface of electric potential energy. So the change in the electric potential energy from A to C is going to equal zero. And also, the work done by the electric field, I've not moved along the electric field line, I've moved perpendicular to the electric field line. So the work done by the electric field is going to be zero. I would also say that the change in potential energy from A to B is going to be equal to the change in potential energy from C to E. Because they're along these equipotential lines, we're going to have the same change in electric potential energy. One last thing I want to highlight while we're here is um, you may get a problem that says, um, what's the work done by you in this situation? What if you move the charge from A to B? The work done by you, well, if you grab this charge and move it from A to B, if you have some sort of tweezers or you use your hand or whatever, right? If you grab it and you move it, um, you actually don't have to put any effort into moving it, right? That charge naturally wants to move it in that direction. The electric field is doing work. The work done by you is negative. You don't have to do work. You actually get work out of the situation. Whereas if you move it from B to A, 
you actually have to exert energy. The work from, from B to A for you would be positive. I also chose the situation with a constant electric field. Uh, a and C would be along an electric potential line. Uh, B and E would also be along an electric potential line. I could call this V1 and this V2. Uh, so like if I move from A to B, if I take a positive charge and I move it from A to B, well, I can think about electric field lines moving from positive to negative charges, and it may be intuitive you, to you now that this positive charge will move along the electric field line, and the electric force on it is going to be in the direction of the electric field. So the electric field is doing positive work in this situation. From A to B, it wants to spontaneously move in that direction, and so I would get positive work out of there on a positive charge. This potential difference between A and B is going to be the same potential difference between A and E. If I move from A to E, I'm going to have the same work done by the electric field, even if I travel along a different path. From A to B and A to E is going to be the same work. We don't care about any work required to move perpendicular to the lines because there's no work required to move perpendicular to the lines. Along these lines, it's all equipotential. We know that it requires zero energy to move from one point in the room to another, right? There's no change in, in energy, potential energy along there, so there's no work. So I'll say work equals zero if we move in this direction. So from A to B is going to be the same work as from A to E. We've moved the same distance along parallel to the electric field lines as before. That would be the same situation from A to B, from C to E. Those two would be the same amount of work. If I put a negative charge in the electric field, the electric force opposes the electric field lines, and the electric charge, this negative charge, will move against the electric field lines. So this is going to be a region of high electric potential energy for the negative charge, and this would be a region of low electric potential energy for the negative charge. The work done in this situation by the electric field, because the force and the displacement are in the same direction, uh, the work on this negative charge moving in this direction would be positive for the electric field. And because it's a spontaneous process, we get work out. As opposed to if you wanted to move the electric charge, like if you took a hold of this electric charge and you moved it in this direction, it does not want to move closer to these other negative charges. In that situation, the work done by you would be positive, and because the displacement is opposite the electric force, the work done by the electric field would be negative. So always watch out the work done by the electric field and the work done by you are going to be opposite in signs. So in summary, I created this summary slide here. Uh, an electric field or force does work when charges move are in it. And this work is equal in value and opposite in sign to what the work you do. Okay, so that's um, this relationship here. Uh, because of this relationship, and I mentioned this on the first slide, uh, the work done by the field, and I'm going to make this, this is the work done by the field not by you. The work done by field is negative change in electric potential energy. And this is similar to the work done by gravity is the negative change in a gravitational potential energy. What's important for you to know is that there is no direct equation to find the work done by an electric field. You must determine the change in the potential energy. So if they ask you what's the work done by electric field, think electric potential energy. I have to think about the electric potential energy. That's what you need to do. Okay. Uh, the work you do to bring charges together, what I'm going to note is the work done by the field is negative the work done by you. I've showed that in the past few slides. And so um, if the work done by the field is the uh, negative change in the electric potential energy, then the work done by you is the addition, the positive electric potential energy. And the strategy, if you have some sort of charge configuration, let's say I have three charges here, one, two, and three, 
the work you do to bring these charges together is going to be adding the electric potential energy of this configuration. There's going to be an electric potential energy between these two charges. There's going to be an electric potential energy between these two charges, and there's going to be an electric potential energy between these two charges. And the work you did to put those charges together is going to be represented by the electric potential energy in that final state. Just like if you move a ball up in a gravitational field, the work you did is going to be represented by the energy that that object has in that gravitational field. Last thing here I wanted to say is be careful about your choice of radius. The last thing I wanted to say here is be careful about your choice of radius. Often in problems before now you were looking at a point on here and you'd have to think about like the point, the distance to this point B. But in this situation all we care about is the distances between each charge pair. So we want to look at this distance D, this distance D, and then the uh, diagonal of this square. So be careful about your radius in there. I see stu students stumble on that and have trouble with it. The problem I chose was a, is a little bit more complicated than three charges. I have the, this charge configuration I worked on before in order to find the electric potential at point P. But I'm going to get rid of that. We're not going to care about point P in this situation. I will name the charges A, B, C, and D like I did before. And what this asks is the drawing shows four point charges. The value of Q is 6.25 microcoulombs and the distance is 0.75 meters. Find the work that was required to arrange the charges into that configuration. And work required to arrange, I'm going to interpret that as the work done by you the work done by you, um, some sort of external thing had to, had to do this. They're not looking for the work done by the electric field. They're work, looking for the work done by some external factor. And so my tip here was to say um, the network in order to um, get this charge configuration is going to be the sum of the electric potential energies between each individual charges, between charge one and charge two. What will that look like in this situation? Well, I'm going to have to add the electric potential energy between A and B, and A and C, and A and D, and B and C, and B and D, and C and D. We have to consider all of the pairs of charges, right? There's two charges in here, so we have to consider all pairs. So I'm going to say that's the, um, the potential difference between A and B, and A and C, and A and D and B and C, and B and D, and finally C and D. So that's all the pairs we can have. I'm going to start plugging in what I know um, about the equation. Uh, for A and B, I'm going to have KQ. It's going to be a positive value because both of these charges are positive and they're equal to one another, so I'm just going to put a Q squared. And the distance between them, their radius is just D. Um, a and C. Okay, so A and C have something um, more complicated going on, right? C is a negative charge, so when I have Q1 times Q2, I'm going to get a negative value. And I also have to consider the distance between them. And again, this goes back to the radius I was talking about. Radius RAC, RAC is going to be equal to 2D quantity squared plus d squared, and this is just Pythagorean theorem, right? Um, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then I'll, I'll take the square root to get that. And um, 2 squared is 4 plus 1, and then take a d out, so you get d the square root of 5. So I'm going to plug that over in my equation. I have a negative because I have a negative charge here, k q squared over d square root of 5. And I'm going to keep progressing in this way. a and d is the same situation as a and c. You can see that's true. So I'm going to put another kq squared over d, the square root of 5. I need it between b and c and b and d. Well, b and c and b and d are going to be equal to each other. b is positive, 
C and D are both negative, so I'm going to get a negative, and I'm going to put a 2 here, so kind of in this situation, I could have just put a 2 here and omitted this term. So I get 2 times k q squared, and the distance between them, well, the radius um, from b to c, or b to d, is going to be d squared plus d squared square root, and that will be d the square root of 2, so I'll put that down here d the square root of 2. Finally, the electric potential energy between C and D, they're both negative charges. When I put a negative and a negative into this equation, they um, combine to a positive. So I get a positive k q squared, and their distance is 2 d's. There's 2 d's between them. So, um, now we're going to deal with all this. I have all the terms here. Uh, what I'm going to do is factor out of each one of these terms. You can see in each one of these terms I have a kq squared over d. And then I'm going to just have constants in um, my parentheses. I'm going to have 1 minus 2 over root 5. There's a 1 root 5. There's a 1 over root 5 here and a 1 over root 5 here, which is a 2 over root 5. Minus 2 over root 2. Uh, plus a one half. There's a two down here, and uh, so you can plug in values: eight point nine nine times ten to the ninth. Q is six point two five times ten to the negative sixth, and I need to remember to square that value. Uh, D is going to be D is um, zero point seven five. And um, I run these through the calculator. When you run those through the calculator, all of those just numbers, you get negative 0 0.80864. And when you run that expression through the calculator, the work done by you or some external force in order to cause this uh, charge configuration is negative 0 0.37863 joules. Okay, so that's the value. I'm looking at the negative sign here. The work done by you was negative, which tells me that um, you get, we actually get energy out, and that's where I'll put it, get energy out. Or the other way to think about this is that this happened spontaneously. We didn't have to put positive energy in. If, the, if we had to force these charges together, and had to do p work, that sign would be positive on the work. But because I'm getting a negative sign over here, what I'm seeing is that these charges want to be in this charged arrangement. And actually, they would probably clump together and proceed to clump, clump, be attracted to one another. 